Good morning. Welcome to another Memphis Monday. If, uh, if you want to see how I built this nifty little gate for my front yard of my uh, shop, stand by because that's what we're going to do today. But we're not going to get anything done. We just sit around and chat. So let's knock off the chatter and get to work. Here's the problem. when I, I don't have a gate. Um, I, I have this uh, yard sectioned off. I got this this uh, fenced-in area in front of my shop. But I can't get into that fenced-in area without using the car gate over there or going through the garage uh, or through the shop doors. I need, a, I need a gate somewhere along this chain link, link fence. And I think I'm going to put that gate right here as a... Um, It'll be similar to the, to the gate on the other side. Let's go look at the other gate. It's a gate on the other side. This goes just out into the side yard. We can use this as a uh, prototype. Okay, the first thing I need to do is in, I need to install a, a gate, a gate post like this. Actually, the first thing I need to do is not install I have one gate post here, but I need to put another one right over here at about 14, I mean at uh, about 48 inches. So I'll need to cut this pipe off, this top rail pipe, and I need to disconnect. I need to disconnect these uh, tensioning brackets here and move this fence back so that I can dig a post so I can put a, put a post in the ground right here. Okay, what I'm doing here is just uh, disconnecting the fence from this post. This is called a tensioning rod right here. And when I take these bolts out, the, the fence is going to detension itself. For a certain distance down the line. I'm going to reuse this hardware. It's a galvanized. It's been there several years but it's still in real good shape. This isn't the uh, right tool to use but I'm going to use it anyway. Okay, what I'm going to try to do here is pull this, uh, pull this pipe back. Because i got to get this uh, top, this top uh, fence pipe here out of the way. This is my uh, one of my gate posts here. It's eight feet long. It'll be sticking out of the ground about four feet. And then I'm going to dig a two foot post hole and then I'll drive it in to the ground two feet. So it'll have uh, four feet underground. Here's my gate. Um, it's the actual width the gate is 44 inches and if you have a 40 you're supposed to add four inches to the opening of the gate and that four inches is the opening that's from the inside edge of this gate post to the inside edge of this gate post now on this gate this gate is 44 inches also but these two posts, the gap here is about 49 inches. So they put a five inch gap when they put this in. I had a commercial guy put this in. So now what I've done 
is I've transferred that 130 centimeter measurement. I'll put that at the center of this post. Okay, now I know I got to uh, dig a two foot hole uh, centered on that little stake right there. Now I know I've got plenty of uh, concrete, so I'm not gonna be too chintzy on this hole. It was real easy digging, so I, I actually put the, uh, I dug the hole two and a half feet. Instead. Okay, you can't use this trick in all parts of the country, only if you have real soft, sandy soil. And it might not work here if I run into a root or a rock or some kind of an obstruction. I dug this thing big enough, I think I can use a whole bag of uh, quick crete in there. This is my second bag of uh, sacri. I got enough room in the hole, so I might as well put it in. What I'm installing here is the uh, the gate post, the gate post uh, pipe holder, and then this pipe. in there like that and what I'll do is I think I'll uh, I think I'll I think I'll saw it off at the other end I'm gonna try to cut this off with a hacksaw because I don't want to go to all the trouble of breaking out the uh, saw saw Now I just slide these two ends together. And bring the bracket up. Okay, now I can just tighten this up and we'll be golden. What I'm doing here is putting on the, the gate uh, hardware here. The hinges. One of the uh, gate hinges goes up and the other one and the other one goes down. Okay, what I'm doing here is putting on the latch. Really a pretty, really pretty elegant uh, system. Okay, what I'm doing here is uh, leveling, leveling the gate. If you fiddle with these um, these brackets, you can. You can actually move the uh, move the position of the gate. Okay, uh, it's time to 
do a little tensioning on this wire to uh, make it a little easier to fiddle with. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a section off the end here. How you do that is you just uh, bend these little. There's a couple different kinds of this. Some of it's twisted at the end, and there's a loop at the other end. Uh, this one has a loop on both ends. You take that out, and then, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Move the camera so you can see how it twists out. See it turning? And that's how you, that's how you can uh, mend two uh, pieces together, too. Okay, what I'm doing here is that I'm in, installing a tensioning rod. Now this, I'll be taking this out after I stretch the fence. This is just a, this is just a bar that I'll be using to uh, grab a hold of the fence and pull it, pull it that way. Um, and then I'll have another tensioning bar up close to the post uh, that I'll be attaching. Let me go show you on the other gate. Okay, here you can see this uh, tensioning, how this tensioning bar is going to uh, fit. It's going to be right in here. Now I put another tensioning bar forward of that because I'm going to be pulling the whole fence that way. Okay, what I'm doing here is building a tensioning jig. It's really pretty simple. I'll uh, I'll uh, finish it and show you what it looks like uh, just a couple of minutes. <laughs> well, I did pretty good with that hacksaw a few minutes ago, so I'm going to use my newfound skill to shorten this bolt a little bit. And that's all she wrote. Here's the tensioning jig. You can see it's got the little hooks coming out of the front. And it's got the eye bolt there in the back. Let me show you how it's uh, set up before we go out there. Okay, here's the setup. Kind of a dry run here on the, on the shop bench. They got these hooks right here. They will hook into this tensioning bar. Actually the tensioning bar we just put in the fence out there. And then here's the tensioning jig, and it's collect connected to this uh, come along, and the come along will be uh, hooked up to the far uh, fence uh, end post down there, gate post, and we'll put a little tension on it. And when it's right, we'll connect it up. Okay, here's the rig. I got the tensioning jig hooked up to that tensioning bar with those hooks. And then the come along is hooked to that uh, that gate post right over there. Now I'm not going to put a lot of super. I'm not. I'm not going to put hundreds and hundreds of pounds of pressure on it. Just enough to uh, where it feels good. Okay, let's uh, let's crank on this thing a little. Uh, this is uh, not just tensioning this part we took out, but it's pulling the whole fence this way. Okay, what I'm doing now, kind of eyeballed it, figure out which uh, which link we're going to be hooking up here, and I'm threading my new tensioning rod. Just got to make sure you put it in the right uh, in the right weave, or you'll have a problem. Okay, I got a position where I want it. So I'll take these tensioning straps. Put the bolts through. 
Now I've tensioned a little bit, a little bit more with the uh, clamps. You don't have to do that, but this thing's going to be really tight. Okay, one more last look at the uh, tensioning jig. It's got those hooks that hook into that tensioning bar. Then just a piece of uh, scrap wood, an eye bolt connected to a come along. Uh, you don't need a come along this big. Uh, you know, you might not even need a come along at all. Just something to get some tension on that fence. And then, got another tensioning bar down here at the end, connected to the tensioning straps. Okay, let's detension it and see what happens. Heard something. You can buy one of these jigs, a metal one. They look almost exactly the same. You can buy one for about, for about $30. But <coughs> if you're not going to do this very much, showing that cost effective just make you just make you one and besides that, it only takes about five minutes to make. And then you can reuse the parts for other things. For example, this is my one of my recycled parts bins. It's got, you know, it's got uh, J hooks and little U bolts and all that kind of stuff. So by reusing this jig, I get to save these parts and use them for something else. I can even uh, I can even reuse this dunnage, so I can uh, put it back up there next time I need a little piece of wood. I got it. So everything in that uh, jig is 100% recyclable. Okay, let's uh, go put some ties on that fence. Okay, there we are, our completed gate. We got our gate in. We, uh, we put a terminal post in four feet into the ground, but you'll never see that again. And importantly, we retensioned we re our fence. So now it is uh, super tensioned all the way along the edge. So I guess we got our money's worth. Well, I guess that, uh, that does it for another Memphis Monday. I think we got our money's worth. We installed a uh, chain link uh, fence gate for the front yard of the mighty Memphis Empire. But I don't want to be known as a bad, bad gouge Memphis. Um, this is how long a, a real terminal post is supposed to be. Okay, it's about six feet. Put two feet in the ground, four feet above the ground. Um, I just put the, I put that eight footer in there uh, just because this is Memphis money and we got to do some, something extreme, right? So, I just want you to know I know the right answer. Um, I just didn't uh, necessarily follow it. All right, so, uh, tweet, and Facebook, and comment, and like, 
and favorite and share and what else can you do? All that, all that stuff and I guess that's it. Nope, one more thing. Make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday.